Hey guys, welcome to Market Trading for Alpha Clones. So in this video, I'm going to teach you the fundamentals of what's called arbitrage trading. Arbitrage is when you exploit a price difference. So basically what that means is we're going to be using buy orders and sell orders. Now I'm going to give you some tips on how to maximize this because you are limited as an alpha clone. You can see I've got this uh, alpha clone here I made, alpaca clone. He's got 541,000 skill points. I started training him when I created him probably three days ago, I would say. Um, I haven't been able to play with him hardly at all. I just did the first new player uh, experience tutorial, and I was about to go do my exploration career mission. But before I did that, I came to Jita and I sold off some of the stuff that they gave me, some of the free stuff. The There's a Tristan skin or something like that. <clears throat> so I sold off everything I could to just get some liquid isk in my wallet so I have a little bit of a starting nest egg to start with. You can see that it's 1.1 uh, million is what I'm starting with, 1.167. And here's where I sold some stuff in the past. So that's my, my starting capital right there. Now as far as skill training, the most important skills to, tra to train are trade all the way up to level 3 and broker relations up to level 2. Broker relations is a skill that will decrease the cost of your trades by decreasing the broker fees by a very small amount, but it does. Another thing that you can do to decrease your broker fees is to get standings with the corporation of the station, which for me would mean going and doing missions for Kaldari Navy. If I did missions for Kaldari Navy, that would increase my standings with them and thus drive down the fees. One more thing to talk about as far as fees, we're going to talk about the round trip fees here in a minute too, but one more thing that you need to know about them is that there is something in this game called a citadel. And a citadel, let's see, let's look at this. I don't know if this will show. All right, so there's a citadel. One good thing about a citadel is that a citadel has much lower fees but you have to trade at a range because you can see it's in perimeter one jump from Jita. Uh, we're going to talk more about location here in a second too but by doing buy orders over there in perimeter these people are able to buy for a lower cost and then they can just haul the stuff into Jita. That's a little bit above your pay grade right now as an alpha clone but I think it's something important that you should know about. Uh, the other skill that you need to know about is trade. Now trade is just a skill that's going to get you more more open orders that you can have. So for me right now that's 17. I've got this to level 3 which is uh, 12 plus I guess there's a 5 order base that you start with. So now I've got, let me show it to you, 17 open orders. And that's right there. 17 out of 17 open orders. You can see that it says 2% transaction tax 3% broker fee. Now that's the base. That's not actually what we're going to be paying here. What you can do to see what your round trip is, is find an item and then just, you can look at that, but what we need to really do is go to, I guess I, I got to repackage it first, so let's do that. And sell. Right over here you see my broker fee, it's 2.8. Now that's because I've got this up to level 2 so as a result it's 2.8 instead of 3.0 like I said you can reduce that by doing some missions for Kaldari Navy that's why I would highly recommend that you trade from the market hub of your race for Jita I mean for Kaldari that's going to be Jita for Amar it's going to be Amar very easy um, they're both the same name and for Galante it's going to be De Dixie. for Mimitar it's going to be Rens R-E-N-S those are your trade hubs. Do missions for those corporations and build your standings and thus drive down this percentage which decreases your round trip and thus means you make more money, a lot more in the end. So it's important to do that. It's going to help you to be more profitable. So we can see that this has a 4.8 on the sell side. If I go here to place buy order, we can look at the buy side. The buy side is another 2.8. So that was 2.8 plus 4.8 is 
7.6, I think. Yes, 7.6% is our bare minimum margin where we break even. So that means that if we're trading something, like say these salvagers, which is a good thing to trade, by the way, if we're trading these salvagers, we want to make sure that there's at least a 7.6% margin between the buy and the sell. But it's not quite that simple. Because prices fluctuate, and they tend to fluctuate in the wrong direction, not the right direction, you need to give yourself a margin of safety there. So, for example, if I put in an order here at 50,277.06 and then had a sell up here for 71,449.43, not a big fan of the one cent game, but that's how most people do it, then what would happen is someone would outbid me. So let's say I had 71,449, I tried to sell this. What would happen is I'd put mine up there and if it didn't get purchased before this other guy or one of these other guys went back to check their orders, they would drop theirs to one cent below mine and thus mine would become less likely to sell because the ones above it would have to sell before anybody got to me. A uh, quick tip is to always sort your market by price. In the sell column, you want it sorted from lowest to highest. You don't want it highest to lowest because you'll end up wasting all your money. So lowest to highest. A lot of new players put it as jumps, as the closest. That's not the right way to do it. You want to do lowest to highest on price. For your buy orders, you want it to be highest to lowest. So the opposite. So highest to lowest. So right now, um, well, what, I'll finish what I was saying. The Because people tend to outbid you, this margin is likely to shrink before you actually fill your orders. Sometimes the margin re-expands when there's a lot of buy pressure or sell pressure, but usually it's going to shrink more than it's going to expand. So keep that in mind to give yourself a margin of error. Basically with these percentages, unless I go get some missions and, and bring that percentage down, that break even down, I'm going to say certainly nothing less than a 10% margin and because it's really tight there even at 10% I'm gonna make a rule that I want at least a 20% margin that means for these salvagers what I would like to do is I would like to have a 20% margin on on 50,000 because I'm starting with the buy order so that means that 20% of 50,000 is 10,000 right so it the, that means that based on this, this is a good trade for me so long as the sell order is at least 10,000 higher than the buy order. And I hope you, you get that math. But basically so long as this number right here times 1.2 is less, less than this. So as long as this number is greater than this number times 1.2. You get what I'm saying. I kind of said that backwards. But um, that's a good trade there. Now what's that percentage there? I guess that's 40% margin. Pretty sure. 40% margin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my first trade. Remember I only have 17 trades and I got to leave some trades available so that once I buy stuff I can turn around and sell it. But since I need to be primarily buying right now and building up my inventory at the very beginning of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with 10 items, 10 different things and equally divided on the amount of ISK that I have, but I'm not going to allocate all my ISK. I'm only going to allocate about 80 to 90 percent of my ISK. So I'm only going to invest about a million ISK into this first uh, round of trading, you could call it, which means I need to put 100,000 ISK into each item I do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a buy order here for 50. 1,277.06. That's one cent higher than this guy. And I'm going to play around with this number until I get it up to 100,000. Well, I should have done that math in my head. So two of them. It's not much, but that's good. And ask you if you're sure you want to pay that amount. I am sure. I'm going to go ahead and say don't ask me again because I'm going to be doing a lot of this. And we're going to go ahead and place that order. Now mine's the highest buy order. I happen to have one of these already, so I'll show you the sell side. Let's say I bought that on a buy order. What I would do is I would come in, look at this price, 
and I want to put it for one cent below this guy, 71449.44. And then you see my net here after all the fees and taxes, sell. So that means I can expect to make about, what, 15000 18000 um, for every round trip. All right, so now we're invested in one item. What we need to do now is we need to invest in nine other items. So I'm going to give you guys some freebies here and on what are the good items. So one really good item to do is a couple of the different Navy cap boosters. These are items that drop as loot, therefore people are likely to sell them to the station. They're also items that are heavily used by PvP, uh, PvP ships and PvP fleets. So the most populars are going to be the cap booster 800s, followed by the 400s, followed by the 200s. We're going to go ahead and start with the, well, that's already above our cap. So let's see if we can find one for 100. That works. So I'm going to buy just one of these for right now. One of the 400s for 106, 101, good enough, and buy. So that's two down. Let's have a look at, well, let's change it up. Let's not do more than one thing of each. I would do the uh, Cat Booster 200 next, but let's go ahead and change it up some. We are in Kaldari space, which means the primary ammunitions used are going to be hybrid ammunitions and missiles. I, um, I'm not a big fan of buying and selling missiles usually. I'm sure there's some profit to be made there. I've just never done it, so I'm not 100% sure that it'll work. So what I am going to do is I'm going to come over here and the most popular faction uh, hybrid ammo is going to be Kaldari Navy Antimatter. And this is the small size for frigates. Now these other ones are used but just in much, much less frequency. They're less common. Antimatter is almost always the go-to for anyone using blasters. So what I'm going to do, and the reason I'm doing Kaldari Navy is because the Tech 1 can be manufactured, which means the manufacturers are probably going to beat you out on a lot of the margins. Therefore, I stay away from it. Uh, this is something people get in loot and are likely to sell. And that's a, that's a common theme you're going to see, is that the best items to trade are items that people typically would fit to a PvP ship. So, and that would drop in a wreck. So what I'm going to do is I need to buy 100,000 worth of this. You can see I just sold that, um, that first salvager, so that's a good thing. I'm going to come in with my buy order for 371. You got to be real careful about putting these buy orders in because if you mess up, let's go 372. If you mess up, then, so let's do, there. If you mess up and do it wrong, it might get filled instantly. Say you accidentally did 472, you may end up paying 472 for this here, and you're you're just out of luck. You've just lost money. So always double check your orders before you put them in. We can see that's good. I always double check them again once they're here. Make sure it's in the right place. It is. So while I'm there, actually, like I said, let's not do two of anything. So let's close that down, and. I forgot to check the margin. So the margin here um, on 372, 10% uh, would be 37. So 20% would be 74, which would be 450, which means that I actually probably should not have done that trade. That's going to be a almost break-even trade. At this point, it's better to just let it go. Um, if I break even, that's OK. Uh, maybe I make a 1% or a 2%, I don't know, but just for the sake of time, there's a mistake like I was just talking about. So I did that as an example. That's my excuse. Now, nanite paste is very common, but it usually has terrible margins, if I can actually click it. So let's see, 26,000, so we would need that to be... Uh, 5,000 more, but it's just not. That's bad. That's bad, bad. All right, so now we are going to move into some items that are, um, well, let's do drones first before we go into the ship modules. So combat drones, light drones. The, basically, the way this works is the smaller the drone, the higher the volume. 
A lot more volume on light drones than mediums, a lot more on mediums than heavies. Heavies have the lowest volume of all the drones. And an important note to know about JITA, because JITA is so busy. We've got 1,500 here right now. Last time I was here, it was well over 2,000. It's a very, very hot uh, station. And because there's so, it's such a busy station, the trade competition here is very, very, very rough. The, the margins are often super small, like we saw before. And what that means is that, in my opinion, JITA is not the best place to trade. Because if you can't get your margin, your base break even, low enough to compete with these people, it's going to be very hard to find items to compete with, which here's an example. So 10% of this would be 33.5. So that's uh, 67. So that means we need to be selling them for at least, what is that? 702, or not 702, 402, which we're not. So that's not a good, that's not a good trade there. Come here, that's not a good trade, I can just see it. These are much less, usually the least comp, the less common they are, the more likely you are to find a good trade. The lower volume, the more likely it is there'll be a good trade. This one needs to be 76, which would be 456. Nope. So we're going to have to abandon that. I will take a quick look at some of these mediums. The reason I do tech twos is because, like I said before, they're more likely to drop and therefore more likely to be sold to the market. There's 690. So that's a good margin right there. That's almost a 50% margin. It might be a 50% margin. So whenever you see something like that, that's a good trade. But the problem for us is at 690,000. So that's above our 100,000. We just got that one filled. Um, that's above our 100,000 goal, but that's such a good trade that I'm really tempted because I can make 300,000 there. You know, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Don't be afraid to take a little risk here and there. I just think that's a great trade. There's enough margin there for me to really play around with and still make a great profit. And I'm only buying one. A lot of times when you're starting out this low, these other guys who have these <clears throat> big volumes here of 147, 881, <clears throat> those guys aren't going to chase a one volume order because it's not worth them. They know that your order is going to clear really fast. It's going to have almost no impact on their orders. So they're mostly going to ignore it. Since these have uh, completed, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get those back up on the market, turn that ISK around, and get the ISK back out of it. The more turnover you get, the faster you profit here. So I want to get maximum profit, so I'm going to go just one cent underneath this guy. I'm pretty much breaking even here, I think. I might make a few ISK, but it was not the best. I just bought a salvager. That's good. Let's look at the other ones here. We got a Valkyrie. That needs to make about 20% uh, would be about 190,000. So that is not a good trade. That needs to make about 170,000, which would be, that's a good trade there. So that's a good one, but we don't have enough ISK for it. So I need to just get out of there. I don't have enough ISK to buy that right now because now I'm down to 200,000 ISK. And I want to try to leave at least 100,000 available open just for safety and just so I don't put everything in. So I'm going to go and find something else. Let's see. What's another good one? Well, there's a lot of other good ones. I wanted to show you more of them. One that I find is usually pretty profitable is the drone link augmenter tech one because a lot of times the way this works is a lot of people use the tech one instead of the tech two because it's almost as good and it's much cheaper unfortunately this needs to be uh, about 280 to be profitable that's just marginally I mean it's profitable but we can't cover 200,000 so that's not gonna work for us um, I'm gonna show you one more thing that's really good or several more I'm gonna show you as many as I can within a reasonable amount of time just from my experience. So right now, what's really, really hot is the uh, named guns, you can see. And the reason for that is because these are being used by alpha clones a lot. And what that means is because they're, because there's so much 
uh, speculation in them. You can see here from the price history that it's wide, you know, it's going crazy. It's all over the place. And whenever you see something that's really crazy like that, especially when you're first starting out, you kind of want to stay away from that. But if we look at, not that one, that one. No, not that either. Where's the tech two? Light, neutron, blaster. There it is. So that, the, the margin's not there for us, but this is another thing that trades pretty good. Usually is the light neutron blaster. Same thing for like 200 millimeter or 150 millimeter auto cannons. Those typically do well. Uh, rocket launchers, especially if they're not too crazy, getting the um, Arbalest or uh, what's the other one? Malkuth is pretty common and there's one more, but I can't think of it. So let's see, another one that most people don't think about that's a pretty good one is expanded cargo holds but the margins not there so that's when the margins there it's a pretty good thing to trade nanofibers tech 2 sometimes can be pretty good but I mean I guess the margins there but we can't afford it can we no we can't afford it so I've got to find something for about a hundred thousand is that I can afford and I'm gonna tell you that's that's kinda of rough right now okay so what else do we got here we got shields um, okay so shield extenders medium azeotropic way too much FS9 way way too much can't do that I'm not a fan of small shield extenders I'm not even gonna look at it because I don't think you should hardly ever use them only when you absolutely have to I'm just really not a fan so let's look at the small shield boosters and let's come in at small and ancillary these are often good to trade they look great to me let's go ahead and do that ancillary shield boosters are used more in PvP than in PvE because they boost much more than a regular shield booster but they're limited on the number of charges their charges or their ammunition they use to boost your capacitor is uh, cap boosters and people typically would fit Navy cap boosters which increases demand for Navy cap boosters but when they run out of cap boosters, which doesn't take long at all, all of a sudden either it has to reload, which takes a very long time, and you probably die while it's reloading in most cases, or it goes to a much, a, a much less effective shield booster. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and get five of these. I think it's fair. Go ahead and buy five of those. Okay, so now we've moved on to our monitoring phase of trading. And what that means is we're going to monitor our, or our orders. So over here you can see the times. And the times are important because if you're doing this as active trade, active trade means that you're doing it, you're sitting here and you're constantly watching and updating, or at least every five minutes, because that's the time that it basically takes before you can change an order. So once you post an order, you've got five minutes. This order right here, I can change because it's at 54, it's below 55. This one I cannot change, this one I can, this one I can, this one I can. So anything that's been for more than five minutes is good. Now, something I didn't do, and I should have done, Let's do this. Let's go ahead and list this one, and I'll show you what I mean. If you're going to do passive trading, which means, and this is the trading that I that I primarily do myself with larger amounts of ISK, and that is I will set up my orders, and it's why I typically do it in slower market hubs, not JITA, because there's less competition, therefore the orders are more likely to get filled before they're one cented. So let's go ahead and do 144. 9.44 71449.44 good all right so now that we're in the monitoring phase and we're in active trading mode so I'm basically I'm going to sit here for an hour and I'm going to update these orders every five minutes. When new things come in, I'm going to throw them up on the market. It's all about that churn. It's all about 
buying it and selling it. And the faster you turn these things over, the more ISK you make and the faster the ISK you make. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to list this. And you can see how important it would be if I could get this, this broker's fee, if I could get that down just one percentage point, it could have a massive impact on my profits. And this is small ISK right now, but you're a new player and just trust me that if you continue doing this, the small ISK is going to turn into big ISK really quick. And, and I'll give you a kind of mathematical, rough mathematical reason for that. The reason is, I need to place another buy order if I get a sell, and I did. Let's see what's sold. I want to go to transactions. Okay, so my antimatter charge is sold. I'm not going to buy those again because that was not a good trade. I'm going to go ahead and buy more of these. I'm going to buy 106100.12. I'm just going to buy one for now because I think I only have 200,000, or just under. So double check. Looks good. And this is what I want to tell you about. If you're doing passive, you want to change that from day to three months, just in case you accidentally forget to log back in for three months, it'll be likely that this order would have filled. So there you go. Now passive for me is I update the orders once a day. Once a day I log in, I take about 10-15 minutes, update all my orders, take a net worth and log out. And I'm going to show you the net worth right now. If you remember I started at just under 1.2 million isk, somewhere in there. I just had something sell, is that cap booster? That turnover is really fast. So let's go ahead and take a net worth. So the way you get your net worth, um, especially at this early stage, it changes once you get margin trading, but you're not going to get that until you're an Omega, is you add your sell orders to your buy orders. That added up is 129, 130,000 plus 200,000. So right now I'm at 1.23 million slightly higher than I was but not much but it's only been about 10 minutes since I first started this whole thing once I get that that's a 300,000 profit so we just did our net worth now we're gonna go back and we're gonna go back into updating and so we're gonna put ourselves in a loop update five minutes update five minutes update and so we're gonna do that now we're gonna go actually don't don't right click it when you're here it's a lot faster just double click it pull it up see I've been outbid so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go modify and rather than type it in I'm gonna hold my mouse over the box and I'm gonna use my mouse wheel to scroll up one cent two cents I'm one cent above him now I'm gonna hit OK there's a broker's fee there of one isk I think now I'm the top order again come back next item still good back to my orders to the salvager in out bid modify scroll up it's good while I'm here check the sell order if you got two orders on the same thing a buy and a sell check both sides while you're there saves you time you can see I just got outbid there so I might as well I can't because of this I'll show you the error I'll show you why I can't so I would take that down to 42 and operation delay I need 51 more seconds so instead of sitting around waiting, let's go over here, check this, that's still good, come back. Then we're done with our updates. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait 30 seconds and uh, tell you about another tip after I take a drink here. My throat always gets really dry when I talk for a long time in these videos. All right, so I'm going to give you a pro tip. Every account in EVE gets three characters. Alpha clones are unlimited. So what that means is you can have as many alpha clone accounts as you want. You can have as many alpha clone accounts as you have email addresses. You can always go to Gmail, whatever mail, whatever you got. There's hundreds of them out there that allow you to make free email addresses. So my advice to you, create three or four alpha clones. 
three or four alpha clone accounts. Take your mini uh, skill injector here. First thing you do, get these trade skills up, run through the new player experience tutorial, and get some starter capital. Three or four accounts. This is if you're doing this hardcore and you want to do it to the max. Okay? So get the four accounts. Do one for each race. So you have Amar, Mimitar, Galante, Kaldari. And put one in each race's trade hub. Jita, Amar, to Dixie, Renz. So now you're running four of these accounts. The limitation on Alpha Clones is that you cannot log in more than one Alpha Clone at a time. And if you have an Alpha Clone logged in, you cannot log in an Omega Clone. I found that out last night. So what you do is you log in one, update his orders in Jita. Lock him out. Log into Dixie. Update his orders. Log him out. Log in Amar. Update his orders. Log him out. Log in Rins. I don't know if I said that one. Log him out. Do all four. Rinse and repeat. That's your active trading. You're running four trade hubs, and now instead of doing 17 orders, you're doing 68. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. 68. Let's go ahead and update this. And sometimes before I update it, if I've been looking at it for a while, I like to hit that and then go back and hit that and make sure that it refreshes. And you can see on our buy side, we've been outbid. So by having four accounts, you have four times more trades. And that means that you can, the more, the more orders, not trades, orders, open orders you have, the more profitable you are. Now once I stabilize, I'm going to try to, on each one, if I was doing this on more than one, I would stabilize at a total of roughly six, not six, eight or nine items that I was trading at a time because it's an uneven number 17 but you basically want to pair it so you want to expect that for every order that you're buying you're probably going to be selling but because there's always going to be something that's not really getting filled you'd probably go with nine items that you buy and just sell seven at a time or ten at eight at a time god my math's terrible today it's usually better all right so this where is that that's still too young for us to update okay so what I need to do now is I need to check all my orders again and I want to do this this video is gonna be a little bit long because I'm doing this and I want to be thorough and teach you as much as I can um, if you're in a rush you've already learned this strategy you already know what to do at this point I'm just being thorough from here on forward going to update. I want you to see me doing it so it gets reinforced as to how to do it. And once you have all your orders, I got to wait nine seconds, once you have all your orders then it's there's not so much lag time between the the buy and the sell and also once you have greater depth in the quantities than just one you'll see that you can uh, they stay for a lot longer before you have to put in new ones. So like I said four counts skill training the whole time go ahead and keep you might as well keep them training with full cues also it's not gonna hurt you and you may find out later on that you prefer one race over the other or you may just enjoy flying all four as an alpha clone you can do it so why not alright so we're gonna go to 11 that's good next item Because I'm in Jita, you can see this lag, how long it's taken to load the next item. That's because we're in Jita, and the server, the, um, the node, is usually pretty slow in Jita. You can see I've been outbid here. That's by the Citadel, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that up. Sometimes I go a little bit higher to try to discourage them. There it is. Okay, so I just sold something. That was the salvager I had up there. So I'm gonna look at how much isk I have. I've got enough to put in a new item for buy. So now I wanna find something else that I wanna buy. Let's see. 
Let's try the webs and let's see if we can do an X5. Yeah, that's a good one. These are kind of okay named webs. They're not as good as the fleeting, but they're better than just straight tech one. So nine, five. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, new lesson, guys. Market mistakes, taking advantage of market mistakes. See this guy right here? He made a mistake. If I had the ISK, what I would do to take it, you'll see this when you trade. It's actually fairly common. Not every day, but you do see this. If I had the ISK, this guy accidentally listed for just a few cents over the buy. What that means is he messed up. He's got to wait, or he, had, he actually could change it right now. I'm going to go ahead and buy as many as I can. Well, let's see, how much do I have? 268. Let's not go all in, but how about 20? I'm going to buy 20 of those. And what's going to happen is another trader is going to come across this, and they're going to, or this guy is going to catch it and change the price to 18,000. But what he did, I'll show you exactly what he did to make this mistake, is he did that, and then he looked down here instead of looking up there because he's doing so many, he just got mixed up, and he scrolled it up and he hit sell. But what he was thinking was he didn't look at this number. He should have been going off this number and not that number. And so he just made a mistake. And you'll see that. And when you do, it's basically you don't have to wait for the buy side. You get the buy side for free right up front. So I know that a trader or him, one of the two, is going to clear that very soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ignore it, not bid underneath it. And I'm going to bid underneath the one above him. And so that's going to be a double my money right there. Really nice. And I'm tempted to have done more, but you know, it may be if something sells here in a second. I don't have anything for sale, do I? Just those. So no, if I had something for sale and I got a little bit of free ISK, I would try to clear that myself because the sooner that clears, the sooner I lock in this higher price. If it stays, then there's a very small chance that someone else will come by and they'll be stupid and they'll list their stuff for below it. And once there's enough of a wall there, then it has the potential to push the prices down across the board, at least for, for some time before it gets corrected. Um, you can see that and that could potentially mess up your trade pair for a while. This will clear very fast though. Anybody trading this who sees this is going to buy it up. It's just free money sitting right there. That's um, what 9,000 times 100. So that's about 900,000 free ISK sitting right there on the market waiting for me to take it or anybody else. Matter of fact. I feel certain enough this is a good deal that I'm going to buy as many as I can. Let's leave just a little bit. All right, so that's going to get bought up pretty quick. Once it does, I'll be able to sell this and that. That's going to be a big profit for me. It's going to help me out. Now we're going to go ahead and do a net worth, and then we're going to update our orders. So buy plus sell is $1,331,000. One one three three one plus we'll say ninety that's one million four hundred and twenty one million four hundred and twenty dang it plus eleven thousand <clears throat> it's one million four hundred and thirty thousand so one million four hundred thirty thousand keep in mind we started out with one point two million we've already got a two hundred thousand is profit we've been here for how long I don't know. Let me see if I can check the length of the video. We have been here. Well, we didn't start the trade probably about 15 minutes ago is when we actually started trading. I did a lot of explanation before that. And this video, as I can see, it's going a bit long. So I'm going to go ahead and end it real quick. But first, I'm going to go ahead and show you a few more things. I'm going to get this up for sale at a buy order if I, got, if I have the ISK. One, one. A lot of times if I don't have the ISK for a buy order, let's check that. I don't. So I don't forget about this trade pair that I like, is I'll just hold on to it and wait. Um, but what I do notice is it's not as good of a trade as it was before. 
Uh, so I may not. I'm probably going to get out of that trade. The margin isn't all that great anyway. So, especially early on, you want to focus on the higher margins um, to just guarantee that you make good profits. Because you're doing such low volumes, it's pretty easy to get them filled pretty quickly. Okay. That's why I keep a little bit of this there, is so that I have the money to pay the fees on the stuff that I buy. I'm going to update it one more time real quick. I always like to check it before I go off. It's good. It's good. If I could get that Vespa to fill, that's a nice profit there. This one still hasn't, but I guarantee it will. I might even make a little add-on to the video when it's done. But that's it for trading. I gave you some good tips. I told you the basics. Um, basics is you're just buying for cheap, you're selling for high. Buy, buy low, sell high. And that's it. Do it in as many trade hubs as you can. So Jita, Amar, Dixie, Renz. Four accounts. It's for free. You've got 17 orders per account. That's enough for you to make a pretty solid profit. What you can expect on the early side of this is you can expect to turn, just from my own example, from a, a, a test I did, I did with passive trading, this is logging in once a night, mostly every night. It took me, I think, 17 days to get a 1,000% return. So from 1 million to 100 million. But it slows down, the more ISK you get, the slower the return. So at the beginning stages of this, it's more profitable than it is at the late stages. At the late stages, you start to struggle to find places to put all that ISK where you can get solid turnover because things just don't turn over very fast at that high of a level of ISK. So the biggest profits for trading are at the beginning, and that's what helps you. So from 1 million to a billion is a lot easier than from 1 billion to 100 billion much much faster than than 100 to 1 to 1 1 billion to 100 billion so your first billion and thus your first plex is going to be a lot faster 1.2 billion your first plex is going to be much faster um because of that and what I would tell you is that when you get your Plex, don't go Plex as soon as you can buy one. Now it's, the prices have come down. For 1.1 billion ISK, you can buy a uh, Plex. You can go Omega, which means everything gets better. ISK gets easier. Everything's easier as an Omega. I highly suggest you do it. But don't do it as soon as you get enough ISK. Wait until you have a little bit more than 1.1 billion. Wait until you have 1.2. So you've got a little bit of money left over to continue continue your trading so that you can plex easily the next month. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've got two more videos about ways alpha clones can make ISK coming out in the next three or four days. So keep an eye out for those. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you like the video and make sure you tell your friends about it. Mm -hmm.